so excited to head along and check out this show. So I was wondering if you could start off by telling us, our listeners, a little bit about how this show all came together and what they can expect to see during the show. Yeah, so um, it's a one-woman show set at a wedding, um, and the the woman who um, you'll be seeing, Michelle, our kind of main character, um, has been told about five minutes before the show starts that she has to MC the wedding, um, which also happens to be her ex-boyfriend's wedding. So um, I thought that would just be a really fun kind of setting to see someone work their way through, um, not only being sort of, you know, the only single girl left at the party, um, but also, at a, you know, dealing with sort of being at her ex-boyfriend's wedding um, and trying to have to be in charge of the whole thing at the last minute as well. Definitely. So tell us a little bit about Michelle as a character. How have you developed this character along the way? Um, she's definitely, um, a little bit me and a little bit, a lot of other people that I love, I think. I mean, um, it's funny, the more time I spend with Michelle, the more I realize how much, you know, sort of I grew up and loved British comedy. Um, and there's definitely some sort of nods to, um, you know, old school, um, Faulty Towers and, and Rowan Atkinson and Absolutely Fabulous, as well as kind of more modern day, um, characters like Fleabag and Bridget Jones and Four Weddings and a Funeral. So I think she's really a little bit of everyone, um, as well as very much, a you know, your sort of Australian girl as well. So when it comes to the writing of the show, how do you get into the head of Michelle? Do you try to imagine yourself in that situation? Do you try to imagine what other friends would be like in that situation? How do you go about actually putting it down on paper and getting it out there? Um, there's a lot of rewriting and sort of testing things out and, and, um, you know, putting down what you think is, is interesting and funny and what I'm sort of interested to talk about as well. And then, and then workshopping and kind of, um, trying to come up with, you know, not only the best story from the best character, but also, you know, where's there an opportunity for a really good joke or a really good gag that people will enjoy. Now, you are working with a very, very talented director in, Ka- in, Ka- in Carl Whiteside. Tell us a little bit about Carl and, and how you met him and why you feel he's the perfect director for this show. Carl's fantastic. Um, he is very, very patient um, with my neuroses, so that's always really positive. Um, we have sort of a similar school of thought. Um, I trained extensively at the Howard Fine Studio here in Melbourne, um, and Carl sort of ascribes to a lot of the a similar way to approach the work, which is really trying to develop the character with authenticity and truth, and um, and sort of grounded in you know as much realism as possible. So we've, we've really connected. Um, in that sense and, and we also have just a really similar sense of humour I think our biggest problem is that we probably spend way too much of our rehearsal time chatting and having a gas bag and a laugh rather than getting down to it How important is a good director to a show like this? Because there's a lot of people out there that would think you know what, I'm doing a one woman show I'll do it all on my own but how important is a good director to the show? Oh, it's I, for me, anyway, it's integral, I think, to, especially as someone who's not only performing in the show, but also the person who wrote it, it's so important to have a second set of eyes and ears and someone who has a little bit more distance from the material. Um, and I would say, you know, as a performer, like, I'm, I'm good at, you know, getting in touch with the character, but I'm not the person who shapes a story arc like a director will, you know, who finds those kind of moments of, of tension and release and who can look at the whole piece um, and how it sort of comes together, and Carl is just amazing in sort of bringing that perspective. Yeah. How long have you been sitting on this show as well? I know because of lockdowns, shows have been postponed for years. Have you been sitting on this show and, and on the character of Michelle for a long time now? Um, not... I mean, yes and no, I guess. Um, she was actually um, meant to debut at the Melbourne Fringe Festival last year, which um, was October, which, of course, was, you know, peak um, Delta Wave 2. Um, so she, she didn't make it out then. But, um, no, the, the show sort of came to fruition um, sort of mid last year. So Michelle hasn't been with me for a super long time yet, although it feels like we've been together forever. 
Um, but it's, it's actually kind of nice that things got delayed a little bit because I feel like her, you know, the home for this show is really the comedy festival. I think that's where um, thematically it sort of fits. Um, so it's actually been quite nice that it has been delayed. It's given us a chance to bring it to life you know, really where it belongs. Yeah. For you as a performer, how tough has the last couple of years been? I know, I mean, I consider myself lucky because I've been able to do a radio show from home, which a lot of people, of course, haven't been able to do with performing. How difficult has the pandemic been for you? Um, yeah, as a performer, it's been pretty difficult. Um, you know, I've been, I suppose, in a privileged position that I've been able to work at a day job and, and kind of get myself through... Um, during all the lockdowns. So in that sense, I've been very, very lucky. But, you know, working as a performer is a challenging um, occupation in the best of times. And this just really, um, yeah, it's been pretty hard to, to be sitting at home when, you know, that's the last thing you want to be doing. You want to be out connecting with people, working and, and you know, taking up opportunities and auditions. And, um, yeah, it's been expectedly quite difficult, yeah. Now, of course, you've just finished up with um, a brand new theatre performance as well at La Mama, The Business of God. How did that feel being back out there and back in front of an audience again? It was incredible. Like, I actually, you know, for the first time in ages, I sort of felt like my life was in alignment. Like I felt so good about being able to get on stage and perform. And there's something, I mean, film is incredible. Um, TV is incredible, but there is something so special about live theatre and being able to share this moment with an audience that, you know, it's different every night. You know, you only get that kind of one moment together and, you know, the audience is just as important as the performer in, in shaping what's happening. So it was just fantastic. And, of course, the brand new La Mama Theatre after the, the tragic fire. Of course, that old La Mama Theatre held a lot of memories for a lot of us that had productions on over the years there. What was the like being in the brand new theatre? We were actually, we performed in the courthouse, which is um, thankfully yep. the, the, the um, second location that, that didn't lose its life to, to the fire. But I have been and um, seen the new space at La Mama and it's absolutely incredible. And I think La Mama just has this beautiful sense of history and community um, and kind of, you know, brings people together in that way. And I'm so, so pleased that, that they've been able to rebuild and, and bring to life this even more exciting space for people to come and enjoy and be together and see theatre. Definitely. Now, bringing it back to Masters of Ceremonies, I have to ask, when, you, when you've been working on this show, how do you make sure that the comedy is there, that the right amount of comedy is there to, to make the audience happy? It's um, it's hard, isn't it? Because, you know, I think I'm funny. At least I, I'm entertained by my own sense of humour. Um, it's good to have, again, to workshop. Kyle and I have, you know, the script started in one place and we've really workshopped um, every beat, every minute, every joke to make sure that it's landing. And I think we will continue to do that um, up until we when we open and probably even during the run, you know, testing it with some audiences as well. So it's just a lot of kind of going over and over again and making sure that, that the writing and kind of the performance is, is um, as tight as possible to allow for those moments of, of comedy. Definitely. Now, for all of our listeners out there, Masters of Ceremonies runs from the 4th of April to the 10th of April at the Motley Bauhaus in Elgin Street in Carlton. The 4th of April is a preview night and all the information for how much tickets cost and where you can grab tickets from will be up on our website. But if you want to grab tickets directly, you can just go to comedyfestival.com. Dot au. Heather, what would you like to say to everybody out there who are thinking about heading along to check out this amazing show? I can guarantee that you um, will have an incredible time. You'll have a lot of laughs and um, really encouraging people to kind of, you know, put on their cocktail finest, come out like you're going to be a guest at a wedding, 
there's a bar for you to enjoy during the show. Bring some friends. Have a great time. Awesome. So there you go, everybody. Dress up and head along to check out Masters of Ceremonies. Like I said, it is on at um, the Motley Bauhaus in Carlton from the 4th of April to the 10th of April. The 4th of April is a preview. All the ticket prices are there up on the website, and you can grab it directly from comedyfestival.com.au. Heather, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's been an absolute privilege chatting to you, and I cannot wait to head along and check out this show. Thank you so much.